This week, I'm going to talk about the histogram and zebras. When I used to shoot with Canon cameras, I used the histogram a lot. It would help me determine whether or not the photograph was exposed properly, and more importantly, whether or not I'd overexposed my highlights. Nowadays, as mirrorless cameras become more prevalent, a lot of them have a function on there called zebras. This is a similar tool to the histogram because it shows you whether or not you've overexposed the highlights. I'm gonna show you each one of them, what I use and what I recommend. Now, if you shoot with a DSLR, you've only got the option of using histograms. But if you shoot with a mirrorless camera, you've got the option of both. If you already use zebras and just wanna see the test that I did to see what level to set them to to get good exposure, go to this time code. The histogram is basically a graph. On your left-hand side, you have pure black. On your right-hand side, you have pure white. And it shows you the distribution of pixels from pure black to pure white. Now imagine this image was black and white. You'd have differing shades from pure black to pure white. Now, if you looked at it with a microscope and tallied up each of these different shades and then plotted them on a graph, this would give you a histogram. To simplify this, take this image I've created in Photoshop. I've banded it into five different shades from pure black to pure white. Now look at the histogram. Each of the shades has been put on the respective places on the graph. And this is basically a simplified version of what a black and white image would be. An image created by the camera just has many more different gradients of gray. Then if I grab the exposure slider and push it one way or another, it moves these peaks up or down. And this is what would happen if I changed the settings on the camera. So as you're looking at the histogram on the back of the camera or in the EVF, you can change the settings and you'll see the histogram move one way or the other. When you get it in the middle, you know you've got a good exposure. In the real world, when you take a photograph, there's lots of different combinations of numbers of pixels. One other thing that the histogram does is show you if anything's overexposed, so you've clipped your highlights and lost the detail in your highlights, or if you crushed the shadows, so the shadows have gone to pure black and have lost all detail. When I'm using the histogram, I just make sure it's not pushed over too far to the right. So I know none of my highlights are overexposed. When you review your images on the back of the camera, you can flick through the display options and get a breakdown of the histogram into red, green, and blue. Also with the a7 III, this is where you'll find the blinkies or highlight warnings. This is where the overexposed areas blink on your image. Zebras are a very different tool, but they do deal with exposure. When you have them turned on, you can be looking through your EVF or the monitor on the back. You'll get these zebra patterns on the bits that are overexposed. Now the camera lets you set the point where these zebras appear. I tend to set them to 100 plus. Then what I'll do is push the image until you can see these zebras, and then I'll click it back until you can't see them. So I know they're just within the exposure range. Then I know that I've still got details in the highlights. So very quickly with zebras, you can compose the image. If you're shooting in aperture priority, you can then use your exposure compensation dial to bring those zebras out of the image. Once they disappear, you know your highlights are safe. So I did a test on the settings of these zebras. What I did was set it to 90, then I brought my exposure so I could see the zebras on the highlights, and then I took a photograph. I then dropped it down so I couldn't see the zebras. Bringing the image back into Lightroom, this is the image where the zebras were showing. The zebras were showing in this area here, but because the level of the zebras is quite low, the image is not overexposed. Then the second image is where I dropped the zebras down so they didn't appear on the screen anymore. The shadows are quite dark in the left-hand corner, and if you bumped up the exposure on this, you'd start to get noise in the shadows. I then pushed the zebra level up to 100 and did exactly the same thing taking one photo with the zebras on the screen, and then I dropped my shutter speed down to get rid of these zebras and took another photograph. 
In Lightroom, again where the zebras were showing, the highlights are still preserved. As you can see here, I've dropped my exposure down and there's lots of detail in the sky. If I go to the lower exposure where I got rid of the zebras, there's a bit more detail in the shadows, but they're still quite dark in this image. But the highlights are preserved. Lastly, I set the zebras to 100 plus. Again, I changed the settings so I could see the zebras on the screen on the back of the camera, and then I took a photograph. I dropped the settings down so I couldn't see the zebras anymore and took another photograph. Back in Lightroom, the highlights are looking overexposed. You can see there doesn't seem to be much detail in the sky, but if I drop my exposure down, you can see that there's still detail there, which I was quite surprised by. If I go to the second image where I dropped the settings so there were no zebras on the screen, the shadows are still quite dark. If I was taking a landscape or a city shot with this high dynamic range, what I would do is bracket the shots. If you're not sure what that means, click on the eye in the corner. This will take you to another of my videos. One thing that did surprise me in doing this test was the fact that with 100 plus zebras set, I thought that the highlights would be overexposed. However, in Lightroom, I was able to bring them back and there was still detail there. In the future, I know I won't have to be as cautious in bringing them back. So what I'll do is I'll get the zebras on the screen and pull it back just so the minute bits of highlights have a slight zebra pattern on them. Then I'll have more details in the shadows. And if I bring the shadows up, I won't start to get noise in them as much as I would if I really drop the exposure down. As I said earlier, I recommend setting them to the 100 plus setting. And that's about it. Ultimately, it's up to you which one you use. If you have a DSLR, to use zebras, you'll have to get an external monitor. If you have a mirrorless camera, you can use either the histogram, zebras, or both. The best way to work out which one's best for you is just to try it. As always, if you like what you see, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, give me a thumbs down. And for weekly tutorials, hints and tips in photography and videography, subscribe and turn on notifications. I'll see you in the next one.